Hello everyone, let's go ahead and take a look at complex numbers and how they are related to two-dimensional vectors. Let's go ahead and begin from the beginning. Remember that we said that any complex number is going to have the form a plus bi, where i is going to be equal to the square root of negative 1, which is also called our imaginary unit. The real, real part of z is going to be equal to a, and the imaginary part of z is going to be equal to b. Now what we need to be able to do, which will be the focus of this particular unit of study, is to take a look at the various operations that we need to be able to perform on complex numbers, because complex numbers is the last type of number that we need to study. So the operations will include addition and subtraction, scalar multiplication, multiplication division, powers, and roots as well. Now one thing that's going to happen with regards to complex numbers is that we'll have a geometric interpretation of what a complex number is. And the way that we do that is we plot them using two-dimensional vectors on the Argon diagram. Now if we go ahead and just take a look at what the Argon diagram looks like, it looks exactly the same thing as the rectangular coordinate system, with the exception that this is the real this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis because all of our complex numbers are going to be a composition of real and imaginary values. So what we have then is the Argon diagram and we will be able to go ahead and plot, say for example, complex numbers as two-dimensional vectors and we're going to use exactly the same type of interpretation that we used with regular two-dimensional vectors. So if we go ahead and talk about z sub 1 as negative 1 minus i, well the real part is going to be negative 1 and the imaginary part is also going to be negative 1. So we start off at the origin and draw the arrow at the coordinate negative 1, 1 in the Argon diagram to represent that com particular complex number. Same thing with z sub 2 which is 1 plus 2i. Notice that is going to be in the first quadrant of the Argon diagram. Now, being that we have a geometric vector, two-dimensional vector interpretation of complex numbers, we now can go ahead and associate the geometric interpretation to the sum of vectors, the difference of vectors, as well as the scalar multiplication of vectors in exactly the same way that we've done for, for vectors in the real rectangular coordinate system. So let's just take a look at z sub 1 plus z sub 2. Of course, that's going to give us the value of i. If we were to go ahead and take a look at the geometric interpretation of that, of course, all we're doing is we're adding two vectors. And in order to add two vectors, we just need to go from here to here, take this vector, move it here, and sure enough, the resulting vector will actually be from here to here, which is represented by i. And we could do the same thing for z sub 1 minus z sub 2. We could also do the same thing for 2 times by z sub 1. And we'll have the consistent results that we saw with two-dimensional vectors in the real coordinate plane. So nothing new here except for the fact that we have to use the Argon diagram, which is going to have the real axis and the imaginary axis. Okay, so let's just wrap up then. Again, we talked about the, uh, any form of a complex number based upon the imaginary unit, the real and imaginary parts. We can then go ahead and put the vectors which represent complex numbers and graph them in the Argon diagram in exactly the same way that we've done with two-dimensional vectors in the real plane. And we can now go ahead and have a geometric as well as an algebraic interpretation of addition, subtraction, as well as scalar multiplication. So, before we end, let's go ahead and ask one last question. And we'll take a look at the answer for this the next time that we meet. Is what is the geometric relationship or significance between z and z conjugate? We'll take a look at that the next time that we meet. See you next time. Bye-bye.